what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Why not? I'm trying to get on the Slice Out Radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, I might have it. You might have it. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. Good evening. I'm Coulter Wontight. I'm already into the 420. Give it. You like music, you like weed, well we gonna be good friends indeed This is how much I like more than smoking trees They'll make you dance the dope z do and teach you how to achieve the growth Smoke a bowl on the 420 Radio Show On Lifestyle Radio On the 420 Radio Show Do you know who that is, Marcel? On uh, hang on, hang on. Radio. So, do you know? Do you know who that is, Marcel? That, uh, uh, sang that song, uh, our, our little intro. That is Jim from the Royal Cushion. Oh, is it? Yep. Uh, did, did a good job. Several years ago, I put a call out needing a little theme song, and Jim's Jim and uh, um, Matt have been on the show uh, several times, and. Uh, he whipped that up for me, and uh, we've been using it ever since. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, this is the 420 Radio Show. We're live, lifestyleradio.net. Come on in, say hello, and uh, let's talk about pot. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about all things cannabis. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Let's talk about marijuana. Let's talk about all things cannabis. Let's talk about the reason why everybody has a problem with the word marijuana. I don't. I do. Marijuana, weed, pot, smoke, dope. It's all the same. Not really. Mm, not really. Now, when you look at the history of where the word came from. Do you know Do you know the history behind the word uh, marijuana, Brian? Um, I read it once, but it's been a long time, and I want... Um, hydrocodones right now, so don't ask me her questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this so, isn't. There you have it. Brian has been snorting his oxycodone together. No, I'm <laughs> eating them. Now, oh. come on. Now. Okay. Brian's He's been pop- some. Popping them like Pez is. He's been through some pretty nasty fucking uh, uh, surgery there, and uh, he's in a state that ain't legal. So, yeah, he's got to do whatever he's got to do. Yeah, which really sucks because I would love to be smoking right now, which I do when I can find it. But the state's so freaking hard to find people to sell it to you; it's ridiculous. You're not getting the 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 um, what do you call it? The uh, Mexican swag? No, nah, around here everybody's uh, pot snobs now. There ain't no swag anywhere. Really? It's all it's all drove that comes in from uh, Denver, really, from Colorado. Huh. We don't have that problem up here. Yeah. I don't know. I've heard y'all had some problems up there. We have problems up oh, here, but oh, not like that. Not like that. No, no, no. I mean, uh, accessibility in this country is not an issue. No, it's really not. I, I mean, it, sometimes it's hard depending on where you live. Like, I live in the middle of butt fuck nowhere. Well, here, accessibility isn't an issue if you know the right people, but. I've been out of the game so long. I don't know the right people no more. And I used to be the right person. <laughs> so and, that sort of screwed me up there. <laughs> and being that you were the right person. Yeah. And being that there are so many people in your state that could use your assistance, why don't you open up a dispensary? Man up. It's, it's just get a, a, lawyer. Get a lawyer. legal here yet. And I'm and a It's felon. not legal anywhere for it. So get a lawyer. <laughs> And open up a dispensary. Oh, see, even if I could, I'm a felon, which you cannot work in the medical marijuana industry down here if you have any. You heard it here. Well, wait now. He's a you felon. You just said it's not legal, so it wouldn't matter if oh, you're true. a felon or not. True, <laughs> hey, true enough. But I'm dumb. Hold on true. a sec here. That was a good pun. That was a good. <laughs> oh, um, shit. Uh,. Did anybody watch, uh, did either of you guys watch Letterman? Yes, I did. It was actually pretty good. Yeah. Did you watch it, Marcel? I know the answer is no, but I have to ask The answer would be no. I'm not yeah. very big. Yet. I figured I've seen his first show. I might as well watch his last. Yep. That's how I, and and um, uh, I, I'm glad I watched it. 
yeah, it was it was neat seeing all the history, you know, when they went back and showed everything. Yep. And stuff like that. And the Foo Fighters rocked at the end. Sure did. They sure did. So today, tonight, this evening, Friday, uh, what's the date? May? Oh, 22nd. 2nd, 22nd. 22nd. Uh, ooh, somebody's at the door. Uh, we're going to be chatting with the folks from uh, Dr. Grow today. Yes. We're going to be talking about, uh, I guess we're going to be talking about growing weed, eh? Uh, well, we can talk about their site, what they do to help patients in Colorado um, and all over the United States, I assume. I'm not really too in-depth into their business. Um, I know they've written a lot of books. Um, they're in the process of writing more. And I know they have one of the top growers that works for them, one of the top growers in Colorado that works for them. Well, so you any know, grow the, questions, shoot them to us on Twitter, or on the Facebook page. Yeah. And we'll get them on to I'm a firm believer that uh, the best way to uh, find out what somebody does is to have a conversation with them. So we're going to be doing that for sure this afternoon. Yeah. Or this afternoon, this evening. Uh, that's coming up in the next hour or so. And uh, till then, we're just going to be hanging out. If you've got any questions, come on in the chat room. Say hello. Marcel and Brian are in there. I'm busy staring out my window at the squirrels playing on the fence with their nuts. <laughs> that sounds kind of dirty, huh? Oh, I was supposed to. We're going to listen to <laughs> some Snoop Dogg. My Snoop. medicine. This is the 420 Radio Show. Come on in the chat room. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. For many, the side effects of using prescription medication can be debilitating and in some cases may even be worse than the disease being treated. When many of these medications are stopped, especially opiate narcotics like oxycodone, codeine, or morphine, some patients are forced to deal with the side effects of withdrawal. The symptoms of withdrawal may include anxiety, muscle spasticity, difficulty breathing, tremors, nausea, and a decrease in appetite. For centuries, these symptoms have been successfully treated by using cannabis while offering aid and relief to the underlying cause for the medication. Cannabis has been proven to be non-toxic and is known to not adversely interact with any other medication. In 2000, Health Canada approved the medicinal use of cannabis for a wide range of conditions to improve the lives of Canadians. Side effects of cannabis may include increased appetite, dry mouth, euphoria, or drowsiness. As with any medication, care must be taken when initially treating conditions with cannabis until the proper dose is established. Cannabis may not be for everyone, but it may be a healthy answer for you. Talk to your doctor or contact us online at MCPA Canada. Yeah, I'd like to dedicate this record right here to my main man, Johnny Cash, a real American gangster. I got my nephew Whitey Ford on the guitar, young Trev on the drums. Grand Ole Opry, here we come. Uh. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. Jack took the spoon on the candlestick. Dope stick pimping on the one trick pony. Yeah, she kinda skinny, but she gets my money. Get my money, buy my medicine, buy my medicine, buy my medicine. Get my money, buy my medicine, buy my medicine, buy my medicine. Yeah, you know I got to have that medicine. That prescription medicine, baby. You know, purple, orange, green Jack starts hanging around with the fiend Got strung out, sold the cow for beans Told young wifey, I love you, honey But you gotta hit the streets, go and get my money Get my money, buy my medicine, buy my medicine, buy my medicine Get my money, buy my medicine, buy my medicine, buy my medicine Yeah, the more dedicated, the more medicated Can you feel me? Girl, my love's gonna last just as long as my high. And I'm high all day, every day. You can trust every word I'm gonna say will be a lie. <laughs> yeah, I lie sometimes. What's the use of the truth if you can't tell a lie sometimes, baby? Now dig this. Jack starts to track up and down the hill Got to walk and figure ace what he told the jail Come rain, come shine, come snow of the sunny You 
the fuck out, girl, and get my money. Get my money, buy my medicine, buy my medicine, buy my medicine. Get my money, buy my medicine, buy my medicine, buy my medicine. Yeah, they say you can't buy me love, but you damn sure can buy me bud. Girl, my love's gonna last just as long as my high. Oh, I'm so high right now. How about you? You can trust every word I'm gonna tell you is a lie. Liar, liar. <laughs> Pants on fire. Girl, I love you. I love you, though. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. There we are. Okay. And I believe we are back, or we're almost back, or we're coming back soon. I've got my water. I've got a doobie. i got a roll. We're going to be talking with Dr. Grow. And I wish I had a doobie. Now, who exactly are we speaking? I'll have one for you. Who, who, who are we actually speaking to tonight, Brian? Brian's the one that set this um, up. We're speaking. Oh, i got to pull up the email. I know uh, it's Victoria, and I forget the gentleman's name, the grower himself. Could it be Justin? Yes, Justin. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Victoria and Justin, um, the, pardon me for my absent mindedness. Like I said, oxycodone are kicking in. This is the excuse show. Welcome to the excuses hey, show. Hey, <laughs> you have a total hip replacement to see if you don't need some. Uh, I, actually, my wife's had two total knee replacements and hip surgery, and she didn't use any of that crap. Well, you have cannabis. I don't. Hey, look. Oh. Hey, can I ask you a question there, Marcel? Sure. Does your wife smoke cannabis? <laughs> I've never asked you that in all these years. I've never asked if your wife uses cannabis. Do bear shit in the woods. Okay. No, I was just curious. Now, does no, she... Does... she? She's actually licensed because of arthritis. Okay. So okay. she has her own license, and and she has me to rule for her. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. I, I don't know well, why. Not, I, really, I roll 50 joints a friggin' day. All the conversations we've had, I, I am surprised I have not asked that. I, I, it's always dawned on me. I wonder, like, you guys sit around and you, you puff together and, you know, you do the normal everyday medical pothead thing? Yeah, well, it's, it's, yeah. for us, it's it's more like two people sitting around smoking cigarettes. Yeah. 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 Right? Because... It's not a matter of, of getting high or anything. It's just a needed fact. So it's kind of like being addicted to, to tobacco, and you have a cigarette every, you know, half hour, forty five minutes, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Well, we, we smoke a joint every half hour, forty five minutes. The reason I ask that is because uh, I I quit smoking about two and a half, three years ago, cigarettes, and yeah. now uh, both uh, the people I hang out with the most, Kim and Te- Tim and Kelly have quit as well uh, talk about the last couple of weeks now we're, we're going on week four and well, like you told me the prices of them up there earlier and jesus christ if they were that much down here i'd quit too yeah well you know uh That's ridiculous between 14 and 16 dollars a fucking pack of smokes now but my my point is um uh, it, it, people more and more people are quitting smoking and, and going to weed well it's a, it's an easy way to to get rid of any addiction is to replace it with cannabis. Well, I did that. I quit for eight months. I uh, every now and then a buddy would, you know, drop over with a bag of shake, and that's what I would smoke. And uh, what, but, what I normally did is do is tell people if they want to quit smoking cigarettes is to start rolling joints with tobacco in it, and stop smoking the cigarettes. Smoke the joints with the tobacco, and then yeah, slowly that's, wean that's, yourself off of the yeah. tobacco. And that's basically that's original, what I that's did. originally yeah. how once were supposed to be. Yeah, it works extremely well. And and also uh, a lot of people do that anyways because tobacco opens up your lungs and you get a better haul. See, I couldn't do that though. Yeah. I don't know. And to me, you smoke tobacco and you smoke weed two different ways. My friend uses um, uh, menthol cig- uh, tobacco when yeah. he rolls his uh, joint, uh, usually hash. Um, yeah. But we make uh, salad, what we used to call a salad, you know, with a little bit of tobacco, a little bit of oil, a little bit of hash, and some weed all mixed in. And I read an article years and years and years ago that said basically uh, when you take 
a drag of tobacco uh the the it just your your lungs just open up and it, when you mix it when you mix it with cannabis you get actually get more in your lungs right a a typical toke is not as deep as a drag off of cigarette is it anybody no it's not no, it's not the same. No, but I I, I prefer the taste of tobacco over the taste of pot. Do you smoke really? cigarettes as well? Really? Yeah, I love the, I love the taste of, of marijuana. I can't stand the taste of tobacco. But that's why I, I've switched to little, or actually little c- cigars and are exotic berry flavors. I can't stand the taste of tobacco anymore. When I f- well, I can't t- stand. I've never could stand the taste of American tobacco. Mm. Well, what's the difference? Do you smoke? Oh, as, do you smoke tobacco as well, difference. Marcel? Do you smoke tobacco as well? Pardon me? Do you smoke tobacco as well? Uh, in my joints, yeah. Okay, you do put it in your joints. I, okay. Because I, I I, make special joints. Uh-huh. And, and that's I, fine. I mean, I know a lot of people special. that do it. I, I, I don't like the taste of pots. Well, I'll use uh, oil and uh, hash instead. Okay. Okay. And a little tobacco opens up your lungs and lets it in, and, and it helps it burn. But the issue that I usually where the argument that they usually state is there's much worse things out there than lung cancer and I'm using cannabis to treat that and I also figured the amount of cannabis that I put in me I cancer is the least of my freaking worries hmm. interesting well I mean it's you get most people that develop lung cancer develop it after they quit smoking cigarettes. Yeah, true. Right? True. So it's very likely more of, of your immune system is so used to having the tobacco there that when it's removed, it doesn't know what to do. Um, I don't tell people that they should use tobacco, but if you're using cannabis every day, day in, day out, from the time you get up to the time you go to bed, you're going to get sick of the taste after a while. I don't know about that. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I don't. I don't See, that's actually interesting. Cause I, don't I don't got sick, sick of the out. taste about three years ago. I had my, uh, my I had my chest x-ray not that long ago, actually, and I figured my lungs would be black as hell because I've been smoking marijuana and cigarettes for at least 30, 35 years. And the doctor looked at him and he said, you smoke, really? So I'm wondering if the marijuana, you know, took the effects of the cigarettes away in my lungs. I'm not sure. I don't know. Studies but, studies that have been done has never shown an incident of a cannabis smoker who uses tobacco getting lung cancer. Hmm. So, I mean, that alone <laughs> kind of should open up your eyes a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Rick Simpson said at one time that uh, that the uh, the amount of cannabinoids you'd be putting into your system when you're ingesting concentrated oils and things like that is more than the crap that you'd be putting it in through the solvents or tobacco or anything else. Huh. And that you makes. You think that would be cleaner? That makes sense, though. Yeah. I mean, like, <clears throat> there is some truth to the carcinogen thing, right? With tobacco, yes, and with with uh, cannabis as well. There are well, a few. There, like, a well, f- no, it's easy to say that it's carcinogenic, but now, see, was t- was was marijuana? I heard that the carcinogens were coming from the way you smoked it, you know, with, right? With and it's, or with it's, it's, and it's, but the, again, it's easy to say that it's carcinogenic. The problem is, is proving it because it's never caused cancer. People don't get cancer from smoking pot. Well, no, they cure cancer. It's never happened. Okay. So, every scientist in the world can say that yes, it's carcinogenic or it's creating carcinogenic compounds, but those carcinogenic compounds aren't causing cancer in the people that use them. So, how carcinogenic are they? Well, chlorophyll is not. Uh, all that great for your lungs. Pardon me? The chlorophyll in it is not all that great for your lungs. Well, chlorophyll's not either. 
What's that? Chlorophyll's not good for your stomach either. No, it's not. No. Right. Uh, chlorophyll's, so what, chlorophyll's a disgusting substance. Well, so so that's one bad thing. You know. Now, right. see that that's the part of the of the plant that's of the taste that I get tired of tasting. The the the, yeah. yeah, I love yeah. the different strains and the way they taste, but you can still taste the chlorophyll in it. I and mean, that's what I get tired of tasting. Huh. The now, I was just things. reading it here in the chat room. Somebody, somebody made a comment. Oh, yeah, Dale. Down here in the chat room. Oh, yeah, Beta Geek says, Younger smokers don't hold it in as much or as long, if they even do. So let's talk about holding smoke in. Why do you I, hold the smoke in? I actually uh, had a sex. problem with that. Is I, it? I, I had I a problem know. with that, a big problem with that when I was smoking because I was toking like I was smoking a cigarette and I was holding my breath in until I literally passed out. And and that stems from enjoying super tokes. <laughs> right. But, now, well, see, everybody, everybody's always been raised, you know, hold it in. No, but I was, I was toking. Why? What I'm saying is, I was toking cigarettes. I wasn't smoking yeah. them. I was toking <laughs> them. That's, that's just, that's just from habit. But yes. here's, here's my question: Is why is everybody taught to hold it in? You don't need to. I know you don't need to. Good question. Yeah, you don't need to. You in and out is all you need. I'll tell you what. What helps, Hulk, is holding it in will actually help prevent coughing. Yeah, when you go, <coughs> right. So if you hold it in, it'll prevent. If you just take a toke and blow it, suck it in and blow it out, chance are pretty good you're going to cough up a lung. Yep. Because it's oh. going to irritate that airway. Yep. It's holding it in kind of alleviates that, but there is no reason to actually hold it in. Every breath you take, two thirds gets expelled unused. Every breath you take. <laughs> I don't even start out. <laughs> so, if you think about this, if you take a toke on a joint, it doesn't matter how long you hold it, the most you're going to absorb is one third of what you inhale. I heard it's three seconds huh. is all you need. I had never heard that before. I had heard three seconds, a, a, a quick <sighs> is really all you need. Yeah, just it, to get it into the bottom of the lungs. Yeah. Now, why is that? Why does it absorb so quickly? Uh, because your your lungs are, are made to suck the oxygen out of the air and feed the bloodstream. Yes. So it's grabbing the cannabinoids at the same time and feeding them directly into the bloodstream. Okay. Oh, right. Well, that's... So ingesting cannabis, you can, <coughs> you can take a capsule and ingest a whole capsule or a cookie or something, and it'll take you know, 45 minutes before you start to feel the effects from that ingested dose. Yes. If you take... Uh, but it's a, more intense, ain't it? It's different. It's not the same cerebral high as it is from smoking a joint. But if you took that oil or a tincture and you held it in your mouth, then your effects would kick in probably within 15 or 20 minutes. Oh, uh, within five minutes for me because that's how I do it. I always do it sublingual. Always. Yeah. Right. Well, now, it's because you have your mouth has a nice aside, fine mucous membrane to to cross over into the bloodstream. Aside from uh, rectally, okay, because we all know. Well, we don't all know, but we we're finding out that rectally that is actually the best way to absorb cannabis so quickly into your body, right? Right, and, and in massive amounts without any any uh, any discomfort. Effects. Yeah. Um, now, what is the best way to? get cannabinoids into your system other than that other than rectally smoking. with the in ingestion not smoking it not smoking it what's the best what's the best delivery system ingestion so uh, or do you mean for smoking for smoking it would be a vape one no rising well but I mean but again if the vape it's so here's here's the issue is, is when you're ingesting it you're basically getting all of it into you in one shot. Yes, yes. And, if, and it can be very overwhelming. <laughs> pardon me? It can be very overwhelming at, at first. It can be very overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. But even if well, A lot of times it's overwhelming because it takes so long for the effects to kick in. Yeah, well, it, more it, 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 you know what? I've actually had... I've, I've gone through this process, as Marcel knows. Uh, uh, hey, you've had a panic attack from, on the show before. I had a panic attack <laughs> because because of the oil I was taking and I took too much of it and I thought I was having a heart attack and I went to the hospital and it was just a little too much for me to handle 
because yeah. I was I was ingesting it, I was smoking it, I was rubbing it, I was sticking up my ass, you know, <laughs> and it was just too <laughs> much. I could, I, I could feel smoking. Smoking and vaporizing is the most inefficient way to use cannabis. Inefficient way. Inefficient way. But it's the now, most, why would vaporize? But it's the most pleasurable way. It, well, Aside it's from food, the most pleasurable cerebrally, yes, yes. Um, but it's the most in- inefficient way because every token two thirds of used, so it's okay. just wasted vapor. Please replay, uh, uh, repeat that because you broke up a little bit. Every toke that you take, yes. you exhale two thirds unused, so that's wasted vapor. Now, if you hold it in a little longer, do you get more? Nope. Why? Because you're only going to get the two thirds or the one so, third of it. So all these years that I've been enjoying super tokes, I've actually been into uh, asphyxiation, not hey, getting me really too, high. Huh? Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you, you basically oxygen deprivation, but more importantly, holding it in, you're also allowing the, the tars to attach to the lung linings. Okay. Okay. Right, because and, you're letting it hang around in there. Yeah. Just wait to hold on to something, and that right there is why Marcel is sitting here with us every Friday night. Yeah, right. Yep. Yep. It's um, science, bitch. It's science, <laughs> bitch. So he's listen. the technical scientific. <laughs> well, hey, you know what? I I like to have uh, people who know, uh, you know, in different things, doing different things that know what they're doing, and and patience is what Marcel does. So. That's what he takes care of. Um, I want to listen to some some big smo. Me too. And uh, with Alex, Alexander King, this is my neighbors. We're going to be right back. I got to call my mom because she called. And this is the four twenty radio show. We are live on Lifestyle Radio. Hey man, this your neighbor over here, man. Yeah. I don't know what y'all think y'all got going on over. See Chuck Taylor pulling in, man. Oh Chuck full of wood. But don't y'all have that music up past nine thirty? We got an ordinance right here, and I ain't having it. One hears for anybody with a neighbor that's kind of a busy body. Always complain about the music and the smoke. The sound of your exhaust, so you broke down boats. Bonfires full of your camp folk where the shine is cold and the whiskey flows. Your neighbors know you can't get no higher. One time, real loud. Hurry I said, the roof, I said, the roof's on fire. Now it's just barbecue and jambalaya. Hellfire for the smoke of the wind. Go to sleep, wake up, do it all again. Even though my neighbors ain't nowhere near. Smoke so loud, I know they hear. Now I don't give a damn if you think I'm wrong.
side, left side, the front and back can't stand me, but I don't give a damn. Me and the fan, always on the front yard barbecue, playing about the noise, me and the boys, always on the back porch making music. You know my name, yeah, I know your name, man, you know my name, hey, I know your name. Well, if you know my neighbor, you know my neighbor, hates his neighbor. Damn, I know your neighbor, think I know your neighbor, is that your neighbor? Man, it is my neighbor. That was Big Smoke. <coughs> Anyways, it's the 420 Radio Show. We're live at lifestyleradio.net. I'm in the chat room now. Come on in and say hello. Hi, how are you? <laughs> don't, don't do that because I'll make fun of you if you do. <laughs> you just, just come in and ask, ask your questions and say hi. If you sound like that, I'm going to make fun of you, okay? Marcel is our staff bully. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a bully. <laughs> <laughs> already chased Ellen away tonight. Sheesh. Yeah, she's not feeling well. She's got a migraine, but she's listening. So how can we insult her? <laughs> tell, her <laughs> tell the truth and admit that she doesn't have a migraine. It's she's just hung over again. She's, oh. she, she's drinking all day again. <laughs> yeah, drinking again. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> we're, no, we're, me. we're dead. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah. look out. She's in a chat room. I think we're going to need a new news girl. <laughs> Uh-oh. Crap. I she just heard something. Oh, God. She's Is back. She, yeah. she checked in to see if we're working. <laughs> no, we took the night off. <laughs> yeah. We'd rather not work. We would rather just sit around smoke joints and talk. Okay, well, we're doing that. So, I'm watching. Uh, what do you think of this Duggar Shit. I think it's on. hilarious because they they live right down the street from me. Are you serious? I, yeah, they live in Springdale, Arkansas. It's about a fifteen minute drive. And uh, explain this a, whole have story. Have you gone to visit them? Hell no. <laughs> Do you, Dude. I don't. I, I've never heard of it. I heard about it this morning. What the fuck is up? Um, I guess one of the sons, when he was a teenager, he uh, molested some girls, and he was going to run for president or something. And he was on a board for a uh, some family. Um family uh, outcry crisis thing in D.C. and the news came back that you know they found out that when he was a teenager he had molested some girls and it was pretty much all bust under the table because of the show and because it was very famous. Sister. So it's coming up to bite him in the ass now. Even Mama June's pissed off. <laughs> well there's Mama June says what they did is way worse than what uh, <laughs> that uh, her family did you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't see a whole lot of difference between all of them. So. Not, not a big fan of either of them. So, um, no. you know, I've never really watched a show, but I guess it's really big. Well, it must be because CNN yeah. has basically devoted the whole day to talk about it. I couldn't watch CNN today because. Well, I know they actually canceled the show. TLC canceled the show because yeah. of this. They now. canceled it this morning, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's um, there, there's. There's the other way to look at it is as being what it is, a distraction from what's real. Yep. Yeah. Reality right. TV. It's a distraction. Something, something of what's else real. to hide the real news going on yeah. in the world. Yeah. Exactly. So, it's, oh, it, let's talk about this guy molesting his sister. It's well, what, geez, he had like half a dozen of them or, or a dozen of them yeah. to choose from. I'm sure it was going to happen eventually. It's what new, news agencies and journalists call a good news day. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> they can. They don't have to tell anybody the truth. They can just feed them sheeple bullshit to keep them entertained. They don't have to talk about the people being shot in the streets. They don't have to talk about the bombs going off in Iraq and Iran. And, uh, yeah. 
Well, I don't really want to talk about that shit anyways, but I, I think it's really sad to what what the, the world is is happening in the world these days. And I think it's pretty sad. Do you know what the problem is with the Duggars? No. A lack of cannabis. <laughs> yeah. And you know what the problem is with the Duggars? They have too many goddamn kids. <laughs> well, that, see? So <laughs> what, what alone would be due to a lack of cannabis? What, it's, uh, the show's called 19 Kids and Counting, mm. right? And the star admits to molesting the kids? No, he's not the star. Okay. He's, he's one of the kids. It says, he's, t- it says right here, I'm watching CNN, stars. and the headline is TLC pulls 19 kids and counting. Star admits to molesting kids. I wouldn't call him the star. No. Okay. Well, I, I guess in a way they're all the stars. But I suppose. But most people would read that headline and assume that it was the father. Uh, yeah. Nah. Okay. Right. So it's a great way for them to. to well, and that's that's what I thought was going on. I thought it was the 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 father. I think it's yeah. the oldest boy. Yes, that's the kid. One of the, <laughs> the oldest son. Because the allegations were was that it, he was a uh, had uh, molested or attempted to molest um, kids when he was a teenager, and some of those kids happened to be his sisters. So, and I guess the, one of the biggest things is that it was brushed under the table. Oh, well, that you know, kind no, of no thing charges happened. were filed, no nothing. That happens yeah. more than you know. Oh yeah, right. Um, and when it came out, were they already on air with you know seven or eight kids then? I think so. Yeah. So how long has this show been going on? Ce- celebrity. So how, has it been going on a long time? This show. I, I think it's been on since they had eight kids. Yeah, I think it was. Um, I can't remember. I'll find out because I'm a Google freak. Yeah, there you go. Google. So uh, this was basic. What was the other show where they had a whole shitload of kids there, um, where there was a big divorce and? Uh, oh, uh, that was. Oh, what was her name? I forget her name, but the little Asian father. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. John. Yeah, like, John. Uh, yeah, John and John um, and Kate. Make eight. Eight, yeah. Yeah. John, John and Kate, Kate plus eight. eight. Yeah, plus eight. Yeah. yeah. I guess that was their replacement show. I don't have a clue. <laughs> I don't know. It's I never a, watched that one either. I've never, <laughs> I've never watched any of them. Uh, but I'm excited that the Osbournes are doing a series of new shows. <laughs> are they? Yep. <clears throat> I read something that Ozzy wants to show people what he's really like because. In re- in actuality, most of the whole series, he was fucked up on drugs and yeah, alcohol. Yeah, now to be off of drugs and stuff. So he wants people to see the real Ozzy, uh, which we did see over the years in that show, obviously. But he, yeah. you, you could see when he was messed up and when he wasn't, right? Oh yeah. Um, but no, they. Uh, I can't remember how many. I'm gonna look it up. As well, so. I know that I know that old son bitch is still touring. I don't know how he does it on stage, but he's still out there like he was in his twenties. Ozzy show. Actually, Wikipedia has just updated it on the Duggar. So their series began in two thousand eight. Huh. Um, season ten began in twenty fifteen, and on May twenty second, which is today. <laughs> TLC pulled the show from its schedule after the Douglas elders, Duggar's eldest son, Joshua, confirmed reports that he had fondled five, teen, five underage girls when he was 14. Oh, Jesus. Well, here's the thing. If they were 13-year-olds, is it really as bad as it is? Right? Because a 13-year-old is underage, but guess what? 14-year-olds and 13-year-olds are doing that crap already anyway. Yeah, right? I mean, I got a 14-year-old son, a 15-year-old stepson. And then and they're probably getting more than, <laughs> right? they're probably getting more than you are, dude. Oh, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, what the hell was that, guys? Who's playing music in the background? <laughs> Holy, man. So, um, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, it's a waste of fucking air, really. I mean, the guy's a douchebag. Now he can pay for his sins, kind of thing, right? 
Uh, I loaded up something here about Ozzy, and but uh, then music came on, so I closed it, and I don't feel like looking. I, I got a question. You you followed this one, Al. Yeah. What's this about Robert Daltrey? He wanted to cancel the concert because somebody was smoking marijuana. At somebody, the I guess somebody was smoking, or several people were smoking. I don't know that detail, but uh, there was mar- marijuana smoke. I guess he smelt some smoke. While he was performing, and he said, "If you don't cut that out, we're going to quit the show." Um, and then uh, Pete Townsend said, uh, "That's not, you know, that's not the well." Hey, you know what? I could play it, but then I get in trouble. Well, see, what, what amazes me is they're the Who. I always thought they were a bunch of stoners. Uh, 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 but I guess Rogers very I get, allergic to this. He's the, very to allergic the to the. It it it, it's, it constricts his vocal cords or something like that. And he was very serious. Well, it makes me wonder but, if he's just becoming a crybaby in his old is, age. Is he one of those guys who says, <laughs> I can't because I'm allergic? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm looking for the article now, and I can't find it, obviously, to get the actual details. Because uh, I'm a bonehead, and I don't put stuff aside like I should. Uh, it says, uh, Daltrey is apparently very allergic to pot smoke, and the mere presence of it causes his voice to shut down. <laughs> I don't get that, but okay. So I guess it affects him like a bee sting. He needs a fucking needle to stick in his arm when he's done. I don't know. <laughs> I guess. Uh, fuck, you're the who. Your main thing was sex, drugs, and rock and roll back in the 60s. It's crazy. That's what I thought, too. You know? Listen, I'll tell you, the, the I'm allergic has been the most widely used excuse ever. Pete Townsend said uh, you should be sticking it up your ass. Did you watch the clip? No. No, no. I didn't. He, he, said, I didn't yes. he said, yeah, stick it up your ass or something like that. I, I, that's what huh. I'm, I'm looking for. Well, we've just finished talking about that. We have already determined it's way more than this than shoved up your ass. So yes. I mean, but how many he was looking out for the better of their health. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen if you're listening and you're thinking about using cannabis rectally. Don't <laughs> shove joints up your ass. Okay, it won't work that way. And don't shove a joint up your ass and get your friend to light it. Thinking that way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there. I found I found the article on Billboard.com, oh and it says, uh, "Let's see here. Oh, we can't play it. Yeah, they've taken the video down." Some bitch. Okay, so that's your fault. You did uh, that. Let me read this real quick. Uh, the Who's Roger Daltrey has a special message for a fan who is smoking marijuana, 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 marijuana at a Smack. at a recent yeah. uh, concert. Stop. <laughs> uh, when the band took the stage at Nassau Coliseum in New York on Wednesday, the legendary band's frontman called out the person in the in a video posted online. The show will be over, he tells the person. It's your choice. I can't do anything about it. I'm doing my best. After, uh, after other audience members shout out, eat it, Pete Townsend also got in on the action with a rather colorful remark immediately after the incident. Uh, Townsend went back into concert mode. And basically, uh, let's see here. Does it say exactly what he said? It doesn't even say what he actually said. Probably not. No, but they've removed the video now, eh? So, yeah. Yeah. But it's out there if you want to hear hear the actual, you know, banter. Oh. I don't know if I would go see The Who. I, I, I've i never seen them to date. They're not one of my favorite bands. Yeah, the only thing I really think was... Well, I, let me finish what I was going to say. Um, they're not one of my favorite bands, but back in the day when I was doing What's Up Toronto magazine, uh, which we're doing again at What's Up Toronto mag, What's Up Tour, What's Up Tour mag got info is what it is. But anyways, we went to the opening night in Toronto of Cirque du Soleil. It was the first time they ever did uh, a big tent and everything down in Ontario Place. And I actually sat beside Pete Townsend because they were performing with him. Uh later on down the road and he was there to see the show and they brought him in uh, just after the lights went down all of a sudden people appeared beside me and I looked over and I was kind of at awe never said anything to him when just before intermission came they shucked him out into the private area and then 
they did it again. But um, yeah, he's a very oh. he's a very large, tall man. <laughs> Interesting. That's crazy. I like their music. I I grew up with it. I like their music, but I mean, yeah. like, uh, there are some of the songs that I like and some of the songs I don't like. Uh, but the same goes for the Beatles. So, you know. Yeah, I'm the same way. I like some Beatles songs. <coughs> that I I won't say that I'm a big Beatles fan. I got a question for people. Beatles. I'm a huge Beatles fan. I got a question for people, and there's only one person in the chat room, and I know that Dale will answer. Hi, Dale. Uh, what? One. What? Uh, yeah, there's there's one listener and Ellen, and oh no, us. Ellen's listen. Ellen's listening because we wouldn't let her on the show. Because <laughs> remember, she was too drunk earlier, and we said, "No, don't do this." What so we said, we'll say that you have a migraine, and you can. I had to pry the news out of her hands and everything. Yeah. <laughs> it was very sloppy. <laughs> there was drool, <laughs> and we had to get a pillow. Yeah, she kept slurring all the words. Oh my god, it was horrible. Anyways, was when, what kind of music? What kind of music do you like to listen to when you're really baked? I'm stuck on Tech Nine. I'm I stuck like on Tech Pink Nine. Floyd. Yeah, I know you two. Both of you are the same. Never changes. It, uh, I mean, it, if if it I used get, to be Floyd for me, you know, if I get high. Which is rare for me, but if I get high and I need to listen to music, I'll put on the heads of it and crank Dark Side of the Moon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good. By, the, yeah. by Good. the time it's done, I'm pretty mellow. I can get a real nice, tranquil buzz off of just look, listening to that album and not even smoking. I mean, it does almost the same. It's the music. Yeah, but it depends on my mood because. I'll listen to almost anything. Any anybody that listens to the station knows that as far as my music tastes, I'm all over the fucking place. True. <laughs> okay. uh, I basically am too, but lately I, I've been stuck on Tech Nine's new album for the past like a month. Hmm. I like Tech Nine, and he's up up there. He's in one of the top. He's uh, like the number one uh, earning rapper in the world, or something like that. All on his dime, indie, no record companies, you know. Now, I can honestly say I can't sit down and listen to the techno rap crap. See, I, I, I listen to everything. I go from old school to, to new stuff. It's just... we, 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 ta we talked about... Um, we, we talked about uh, uh, EMD music and stuff. Right. Of course, yeah. people are, are messaging me. Of course, they are. Yeah. Everybody loves you, Al. Yeah, everybody loves me. Plus, you need to answer them because it's costing us a fortune to get those people to send you messages. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there's a good news for veterans lately. Um, there's an amendment that just went through that will allow VA doctors to recommend medical marijuana to their patients in states down here where it's legal. Which that is, is great news. They have been fighting for it for PTSD forever, and as a veteran myself, that's excellent news. So they're they're basically ta learning a lesson from Canada. Uh, yeah, because slowly, very very slowly. <laughs> our Veterans Affairs are paying up to ten. Up or paying up to ten grams a day for patients right now. Wow! So that's pretty good. I mean, let Veterans Affairs pay for their medicine. Yeah, and it and it's working. Very good. I know it works great for. Actually, next um, next month on the twentieth, we'll be in PEI doing our medical cam cannabis conference, and in the afternoon will be the Brain Health Matters which will basically be on PTSD um, with one of the featured guests being Fabian Henry from Marijuana for Trauma. Who, who Do we have him on the show? No, not yet. Oh, But okay. we will. He's a busy guy, too. Um, we had Trev Bungay, who does something similar. Okay. okay. All right. Fabian yeah. also does it, but Fabian is working directly with Veterans Affairs to get patients 
medicine paid for. Awesome. That's so awesome. It's, it's a big plus for, for the veterans. Cool. Cool. Well, we'll have to get them on the show sometime. Uh, 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 Illinois. Anybody in Illinois, uh, marijuana was just decriminalized. Um, they're still working on the wording and stuff, but you won't get locked up for it anymore if you've got small amounts, 15 grams or less. It's just going to be a fine and a traffic ticket. So they're slowly well, moving ahead on that thing. Yeah. It's baby steps. Yep. And that, that, you know, compared to how it was here 10 years ago. Yeah. But, I mean, it, 80 years of prohibition, it's not going to change overnight. Nope. So we've got to go Although ahead. alcohol did. <laughs> down here anyway Dr. Grow has entered the chat room yes Victoria from Dr. Grow is in the chat room the, the doctor is in the house she's waiting for Justin to get there I guess uh, where he works harvests over 100,000 grams a day wow that's a lot they, they're, they, they grow their own organic weed and they've won the blue ribbon for best, best marijuana plant at the Denver County Fair I we could probably let these people tell them themselves when they get here, you know. Yes, we will. Well, no, no, no. I just some future things. Just, you know, just uh, <laughs> you know, giving people the the poop on who these people are, right? All right. Here's a question for you, Marcel. You'd probably be better at this, even though you're up there. What is your opinion on states down here that are legalizing medical marijuana, but for CBDs only, or CBCs only? I think they're stupid. In in Texas, Texas just put in a bill and they want it to be 0.3 or less THC. And what we're finding here is that patients that have been using CBD only, especially in their kids for epilepsy, after a while it no longer works. They give them whole plant cannabinoids or like an oil made even with a low THC but at least some THC in it and it seems to be working again for them. Um, Very cool. So CBD only, CBD only legislation is a great ploy to, to get it in, but it's going to be really sucky for the people that are stuck with it. Yeah, there's actually quite a few states down here there that are, are people, doing it that way. And I there are really people ridiculous. picking up their fucking lives and moving for that. Yeah. Okay. Why? Why is this the like? I mean, I've heard, I've heard that before, obviously, but why aren't people telling? You know, speaking up about that. They are, but the people aren't listening. These are really tight Republican states. Well, you know what? Um, in the Bible a, Belt. Lot of, a lot of money is being put into promoting CBD-only oil. Yeah, I know. I... Right? Um, and the problem is, is that's only... that, Or that's really great if your issue is a deficiency in your endocannabinoid system of CBDs. But what if it's one of the other cannabinoids that you actually need? Right. So, in all honesty, whole plant extract is still always going to be your best alternative because you're going to get all of the available cannabinoids. Yeah. That's like New York. They got their bill passed in 2014, which I don't even understand it, but you're allowed a 30-day supply of non-smokable marijuana. Non okay, wait, 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 wait. Non-smokable? Yeah, I totally don't understand it, but that's go to right, non, non smokable marijuana would have to be oil. You would think edibles, but well, oil is smokable. Uh, it would have to be cookies and candies, um, maybe tinctures. And uh, oh, you can you can, sm you can smoke a tincture. I've I've done it. Yeah, we should, <laughs> and you can smoke emulsions, but you should. <laughs> yeah. Um, but really it's it's your edibles that would be the only thing that would be considered non smokable It doesn't really go into it right now, but if I go to the website I can pull it up. But I just thought that was ridiculous when I read that over. I'm I've like, not I didn't hear that. I never heard that. Yeah, I, I got a list of the states. You got Alaska, possession limit, one ounce usable, six plants, three mature, three immature. You know, I got a whole list of different states and what the laws are and it's just crazy. Some of the laws that are out there that they're actually passing just to get something going, you know, which is a start, but still, you know, it's not the right start, in no. my opinion. No, 
and it's people grasping at straws to get whatever laws they can pass to at least get a start, but it could backfire on them. Oh, yes, it could. So, um, uh, uh, Kelly says, uh, hi, hi, Bryant, and uh, she hi, misses Kelly. you. <laughs> Anyways, um, uh, there was something I was going to say, and now I've forgotten because I've smoked too much cannabis. Sure. Well, how about we take a break, play a song, and then we can give uh, Victoria a call. That's and what, what I. That's that's company. that's what I was going to say. We'll be right back. This is the Killing Time Band with the. It doesn't make sense. Right here on the 420 Radio Show Live, LifestyleRadio.net. Come on in the chat room, ask your questions, or tweet us. <laughs> It's time for a change 
And uh, as I say that, I see that we're back on the air. And we have <laughs> been joined by Victoria from Dr. Grow. And Justin Hello. will be along with us shortly. He just pulled into the driveway, I hear. <laughs> Yes, he'll be, he'll be here in just a minute. No rush. He actually he actually had to go take a leak before after he comes <laughs> in. Uh, that's okay. I it's a long that. drive. It is a, it, it's a it's a long drive from where he works. Oh, okay. Um, so maybe you can you can uh, while we're waiting for him to to get comfy, maybe you could explain to me what you folks do and and uh, all that stuff. Well, basically. We teach and we advocate for organic growing, for everybody to be able to grow their own. Um, we also teach methods that are um, less expensive than, you know, the, the traditional wisdom that's in every online grow forum is that you have to go out and get these HID lights that produce massive amounts of heat and about 30% of the light they produce is not used by the plants. And um, because you're using hot lights, if you don't want to set your house on fire, then you have to put in expensive air conditioning systems and all kinds of other systems to mitigate heat. Mm. We actually grow using um, fluorescent lights, compact fluorescent lights, and LEDs. And we're able to produce really nice, big, fat, thick buds doing that. And we think it helps um, not only cut your costs for growing, um, it's a safety issue. You're not going to burn your house down growing with fluorescents and LEDs. And, um, you know, people like a lot of people uh, um, get caught growing because of their electric bill being so high. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's it's good for that. And also... Um, you know, we want to, the, there's a limited number of resources on the planet, and we shouldn't overuse electricity if we can avoid it. And, you know, you want to get your cost per gram of bud down as low as you can to make it worth it to grow. So, anyway, I've we've probably. Heard we've, LEDs are great. Yeah, we, we, we've been using, uh, Justin just walked in, so he's going to pitch in here, too. Um, we've been using LEDs for a while, and he's just completing um, some full grows with LEDs, and he really likes them. What kind of yield are you getting from LEDs? I'm getting a pretty good yield. Um, a little, definitely a better yield than what I was getting with the CFLs. Uh, not that the CFLs were bad. They're really great lights to grow with, honestly. But uh, getting... Uh, more denser buds, tighter growth, and they're actually flowering, finishing about five days earlier normally than they would if I was using other lights, which is nice. So it even cuts off a little of your grow time, too. You're, you're going to have to bear with us a little bit because up here, I know that Marcel grows outdoors, right? Outdoors organic, yeah. Yep. And um, I've never grown with lights, but but Brian has, right? You have, Brian. yes. Yeah. I've grown with uh, LEDs and uh, uh, CFLs. I also and, um, grow. I also grow with lights, but I prefer not to. I prefer outdoor. Now, with with your operation, um, how many more CFLs and LEDs do you need compared to say, you know, one five hundred watt? Uh, you know, a hate light or something. We we typically when when Justin is like um, in one grow tent, he has um, uh, two LED lights. One pulls about 120 watts, and another one pulls about 240 watts, I think. And um, there are five plants in there, and they're big, bushy plants with buds as big as your fist. Wow. Yeah, I heard y'all got the, the best plant in the Denver. Uh, t- tell us about that the, the award year. Yeah, it's a, it's, yeah, it's the Denver County Fair. We were really excited about that because it's the first time ever in history that a marijuana growing competition was held at a, at a state fair or county fair, and uh, we were lucky enough to take first place. Now, it's now huge the, there in Colorado now. The plant that you won first place with, was that grown under LED? No, that was actually grown under CFLs. Under CFLs? Interesting. Yeah. 
Nice. Can, can you explain to me yeah. the difference? Can you? Because I'm not familiar with it at all. I'm just the guy that goes out in the backyard and throws a couple seeds down. <laughs> explain what CFLs? Well, the, the difference between yeah, the lights. Yeah. Com- yeah, compact fluorescents. We we use um, compact fluorescents that are the equivalent of about a 300 or 350 or 400 watt light, but they only draw about 65 watts. Yeah, actually, 65 to 85, varying on the the light output they're putting. The higher watt ones are closer to, they're pretty much the equivalent as a 600 to 85, and 65 watts are equivalent to a 300 watt wow. HD. So you could use you could use something like that in a, closet, in, a, in a closet and not have to worry much about heat. Absolutely, and then you don't have the heat issues. You don't have to worry about burning your plants or burning the house down, you know, it's uh, and you don't have to mitigate the heat either. You just have to have a good fan for circulation. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you definitely would want air circulation. And the advantage, too, is with, you know, HIDs, that you have to at least keep a footer farther from the plants when you're growing them, and the CFLs, you can have them within three inches of the plant growing. Does that change the amount of water you need also, or...? Because you would think that HIDs would evaporate the water more if it's hotter. They do. I think definitely you, you don't probably have to water as frequently. Um, but that also varies on just climate, too, I'd say, for where you live, too. If you're in a much more drier climate like we are here in Colorado, then it, I water my plants every five days. But I know when people have HIDs, they're running them. They're probably watering them. They probably feed them every five days, give them nutrients, but every three days or every two and a half days, they're coming through and uh, giving them a little extra water just to get through until the next watering itself. Okay. Sorry, I'm just looking at your website while you were talking. Um, uh, I don't, like I said, I don't, I've, I've used uh, straight white fluorescent lights. I've used a high intensity 150 watt bulb like a street light kind of bulb. Uh mm-hmm. and and I've I've always wanted to try some LEDs because I have very limited space. Um which is is one I can I can send you, you know, if you in the chat room if you put your email address in there, I can email you the link to where we bought the LED lights that we really like from Amazon. Okay, cool, cool. And because we've tried out some others that we did <coughs> not like. Because unfortunately, some LED lights, especially ones that were coming out a few years ago, they were shit. They just weren't any good. And it was just, they were made in China, and people were just jumping on it and putting arbitrary LEDs in there. And now the LED lights are coming out tuned to the right wavelengths, and the wavelengths uh, of light that the plants will use the best. So you're using like the different color spectrum lights and that. Well, the the I think if I remember right, I'd have to look it up. But if I remember right, I think it's six hundred and six sixty nano. Is it nanometers? Yeah, nanometers. Six sixty nanometers is um, the is one of the wavelengths that's ideal, and another one is in the 400s or 500s, and um, the shorter one is the reds, and the longer one is the blues, and uh, the, blues, the blues are for veg, and the reds are for flowering, but, you know, you were saying, didn't you say you used just the long tube T5 fluorescents? Yeah, they were like, you know... We, 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 use, those, we use those all the time. We start all our plants under yeah. those. Well, I, I, I've seen video of, you know, a, a whole time-framed video of somebody taking the time to do everything right and actually growing with just regular regular old fluorescent bulbs. And uh, they don't get a huge yield, but they get some nice growth. Yeah, right. you can. And for the, for the veg growth, for the veg stage, you can use those long tubes. They're called T5s. Okay. You can use the T5 fluorescent lights uh, clear up until you put them into flowering if you want. Yeah, and just to clarify, too, the T5s are the ones that are the really small ones, about the diameter of a dime, and the T8s are the big ones that you see, like, up in 
businesses, like if you go into a grocery store or something like that. Those are the long, long ones too, but they're a little larger. They're the normal standard. <coughs> so you can use T8s or T5s, right? Right. I would suggest T5s because you actually get a little higher output of light from them personally and, than you can. And you get T8. a lower, you get a lower output of heat. With oh, indeed. T8. Yeah, with the much, T5 much. Yeah, T8. Yes. Yeah. So in a closet, I normally recommend patients here that want to keep a plant or two in a closet to use CFLs and, and to use uh, fluorescent tubes because... Yeah, and that's, and that's ideal. That's and ideal. It, it keeps down the heat. So I've showed people how to take light fixtures and mount them on a board so you can put light bulbs all the way up I've the board. I've done that. Yeah, yep, yep. Oh, oh, right. Perfect. Yeah, and that's perfect. That's perfect. So then you can have them standing in the corners in the room and then fluorescent mm -hmm. tube over the top. Everything gets fully lit all through veg. No, uh, yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, that's nice, especially if you can get the the lower branches lit that way. What yeah. is what is your average setup for a closet cost these days with the new lights that are out? Is it more expensive? If if you're using CFLs, you can do a closet grow for less than two hundred bucks. You can probably do oh, it yeah. for a hundred dollars. I'd say I'd say yeah, hundred hundred fifty. Really? That would be two hundred Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, but you know, for getting your pot, soil, you got your light, you got your timer, your power strip, nutrients, everything. It it can be very. You can do it for very much, a lot cheaper than what most people are doing. One of my coworkers is like, man, I just need three thousand dollars or a grow box, to be able to grow weed. And me and a couple other people were like, why would you need that much money? That's just ridiculous. That's yeah. a waste of time and money. Well, the problem is, too, that there's, again, like I said, the myth in the growing community, and uh, I've seen two different articles on the Denver Post when they were running articles about growing, and and they asked other people who were master growers, you know, how much how much should somebody expect to spend to start a grow, and they all said, you know, three to $5,000, and that's absurd. In Colorado, you're only allowed to grow six plants, and only three can be in flowering at any time. You can go buy weed at full price for less than it's going to cost you to grow it if you're going to spend three to five grand for a grow setup. But we can get people set up for 150 bucks. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's I, I've never even... I've never asked anybody this. I know Marcel grows organically and y'all grow organically. What's the difference between growing organically and a regular grow? Great yeah. question. Uh, difference really comes down to, I think, overall, is the uh, really a, the finished product there. Uh, with synthetic nutrients, you can definitely grow really great, wonderful plants and get really good yields out of it. Uh, the biggest thing I, I see that a lot of people do uh, is accidentally over fertilize their plants most of the time if they're using synthetics and they don't flush the plants in the end. With uh, organics, you have a lot less of a chance. You, I mean, you can still over fertilize them, don't get me wrong, you can definitely do that. But it, it's a little <coughs> harder to over fertilize them and you get a lot better balance in nutrients. So if someone wasn't to flush at the end, uh, which I would highly recommend they do, but if they were not to, you wouldn't have as much of a harsh taste and flavor and, you know, end with uh, the finished product with the flowers when you're finishing with them. Another thing I've noticed is people, other people I know who smoke um, have told me, because, I mean, we just do organic and we always share. We, we, we give a lot of our weed away um, that we grow. And people tell us that they can tell a huge difference because they tend to almost have something akin to a hangover after they've smoked non-organic weed because of the chemicals that are in there, and they never get the hangover with it, with good, clean, organic weed. Interesting. Marcel, is that the same up there? Or? For me, uh, I only smoke organic because if it's grown with any... Yeah, and that doesn't matter how good you are at flushing it. If it's grown with synthetic chemicals and fertilizers, I choke. I choke yeah, anyways. Me too. Yeah, it's still there. It's definitely present, unfortunately. Yeah. And and part and part of the reason, I mean, I use it recreationally for sure, but I also 
use it. I have a an inherited neuromuscular disease, um, and it's a hereditary neuropathy, and I get really bad pain, nerve pain, in my my arms and hands and my legs and my feet. And I find that if I if I smoke organic weed for it, it really helps. But if I smoke uh, weed that has chemicals in it, um, I get other things. I'll get a headache, and or I you know I have other other after effects from it. And I've already got a lot of pain. I don't need any more. Yeah, okay. understandable. A uh, question in the grow room: um, surge protectors for the LEDs. Surge yes, protectors no. for LEDs? Yeah, I use surge protectors for all my lights. Um, I have read their stories of some people that are, you know, are very animate about it. You know, I I definitely, no matter if you're even using the CFL, I would still use a surge protector. You just don't want to blow out your lights at all. You can help it. Uh, I think it's a really <laughs> smart thing to have. And, you know, also you can lose your timer on that too. Which, I mean, it it's not a huge cost, but that can be a cost that you don't account for or want to have to replace immediately if you get a bad lightning storm or just a power surge in the power lines that just, you know, fries everything and you have to recoup everything and restart over. And Justin also uses um, a CO2, uh, what do you call that, cylinder? Oh, yeah. Um I uh, CO2. I use uh, CO2. I use a regulator and a CO2 tank also. And he's got that on the same timer with the lights because uh, plants won't uptake CO2 in the dark. They'll only uptake the uptake the CO2 in the light. So he has um, his CO2 regulator on the same timer with the lights. So you know it's good to protect all that stuff. Okay. And for people that don't know, uh, can you explain what a CO2 regulator is? Oh yes, definitely. Uh, what a CO2 regulator is, it's a uh, piece of um, metal. It's, it looks like a bunch of pipe fittings that have been put together with a knob and a couple of gauges on it. And what it does is it, it helps uh, release the CO2 gas that is in the, the tank, the canister tank there, into the grow room during intervals of the flowering period for the plant there. And you can definitely increase your yields by 20 to 30% at least if you're able to have a regulator in there. And with the timer that I use, that it goes off, I have it go off every two and, well, a little over two hours, like every two, two, and, two hours and 45 minutes uh, throughout the day. From when the lights come on, it comes on immediately with the lights and then it goes throughout the day. And then it, uh, when the lights and everything shut off, then the machine all, or the tank shuts off and it's not releasing gas anymore into the grow. Until the lights come on again, right? Right. Cool. That way you're not just leaking CO2 into your house continuously or anything like that. Uh, um, tell us a little bit about your, your grow school you have. Uh, um, what kind of classes do you have and how much does it cost? And like well, that. we've we've at, we've designed the classes, but we haven't actually got a space to offer them in yet. So, the classes we've been giving so far is just go to somebody's house and teach it when they have people together. But uh, when we get the money, we're going to um, open a you know a physical space that's a grow school. We t we have a, a few classes. One is um, basically growing one hundred and one, the basics of how to start your grow and. And we really emphasize things like um, grow room hygiene and sanitation so that you don't end up with problems with powdery mildew and spider mites and all that crap. Powdery mildew. Um, now there's some. Pardon? Powdery mildew. Powdery mildew. Are you powdery familiar mildew. with that? <laughs> it's just, it's a horrible, it, it, yeah, I am, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's an awful insidious thing that, that really screws up a grow. Yeah. And, and in fact, one of the things Justin has found working in the commercial grows is that almost all the commercial grows have some powdery mildew in them because they haven't figured out how to control them in grows that large. Mm -hmm. And so when he comes home from um, working, if he's been working in an area that had powdery mildew, he literally takes his clothes off when he gets home, walks straight to the dryer, 
throws his clothes in the dryer on high heat to kill the mildew, goes and takes a shower, and then puts the ozone machine in his car to to kill any mildew so he won't take it into his own grow. Yeah, I haven't had an infestation over three years, and I'm keeping it that way. <laughs> I, it, it's the worst thing to have because, and uh, as you said, you know what powdery mildew is. is that you can catch it early, that's great, but if you don't, because if it gets into the root system and into the plants themselves, then you're just, you got to chop everything down and start all over. It sucks horribly. Do they? There's no getting around. You can't clone the plants and just try to make new ones to, to mitigate it because it doesn't matter. The new ones will have it too. And the only times we've ever had powdery mildew is when we got clones from someone else. We started growing from seed about three years ago, and we only grow from seeds now. What, is, what does um, it look so like? So that we don't, we don't take a chance of introducing somebody else's crap into the grow. What, what does it yeah, look all like? All the infestations we had were all from clones that we bought from different different dispensaries at one point or another and can you they're all contaminated unfortunately can you describe what it looks like just just you know for curiosity sake so that if somebody was to see it they'd know somebody's phone's going why, I think. why am I listening to an ice cream truck <laughs> sorry one's driving by <laughs> <laughs> he, he ran out on his phone to get an ice cream, an ice cream truck. Yeah, he ran out to get a choco taco. <laughs> Heck yeah, that's <laughs> wonderful. Uh, I'm still in one of them old school neighborhoods where they drive by for the kids. Well, yeah, tell, they, tell they them do to that come back. I want some are. ice they, cream. They drive by here too. So powdery mildew. It looks like a li- like a pow- literally white powder on this. Yeah, it almost looks like powdered sugar. Somebody sprinkled on. It will start off. You'll see little spots of it on. The larger fan leaves coming off the plant, if it's in vegetation, you'll see it here and there. Uh, if it's a plant that's in flowering, uh, depending on how far into flowering you are and when the infestation, if, if it was hit, you know, knock on wood, not wanting it to, uh, you'll see it on the, the fan leaves that are coming off of the buds themselves and the small side sugar leaves, and then also will start spreading onto the buds themselves. Um, but it pretty much looks like, like I said, uh, like powdered sugar. Somebody kind of sprinkled on it in little spots here and there. Yeah, and it's not, it doesn't sparkle like trichomes. The trichomes, so, you know, some buds have trichomes on it that look like powdered sugar, but they kind of sparkle. The the um, powdery mildew does not sparkle. It just looks like a, a it could be like chocolate powder maybe yeah. or yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's flat white color or look to it. Are there other problems that you have to watch out for as well? I would say, well, the spider mites. Well, yeah, there's definitely, you know, you get spider mites, aphids. Um, if you're a smoker, somebody who smokes tobacco, uh, it's really good to make sure you're always washing your hands if you can before. Very Don't smoke that. in and around your plants yeah, because there are that. carcinogens that can poison the plant. I've heard that, yes. Yeah. Um, now, is is there much of a difference the actual growing part be between indoor and outdoor? Uh, yeah, there is. Uh, the nice thing is, is outdoor. You, obviously, you've got sun for your your light source, which is great. Um, the advantage also to outdoor, depending on how you're growing outdoors if you're able to grow in a, a area where you can keep your plants developing well and full or if you're having to tie them down and not make them as conspicuous uh, the advantages for outdoor I would say is that you don't have to you're not on a time schedule like okay I've got to make sure my switch my lights to this time at this point so I can start flowering the plants will automatically start flowering as the seasons change if they're growing outdoors, so you don't have that stress and worry. You're not having to try to use, you know, if you are using CO2, not that you have to, but if you are, you're not having to replace the CO tank, CO2 tank, you know, refill it every so often. You're not having to possibly change out bolts or change out timers. Um, I would say there's definitely some great advantages 
to growing outdoors. Disadvantage of the outdoors, I would say, too, is then you've got, if you're in an area that has a lot of high humidity and, like, we've been getting here in Colorado a lot of rain, that if it was towards the end of the growing season that you could possibly get some bud rot because of such high humidity and so much rain that it could cause the flowers to get a little bit of bud rot. You also have pests. you got to worry about deer, mice. Other animals love to eat weed. <laughs> they love it, and they'll chomp it down to nothing, to little stubs if you're not careful. Do you have a problem so, with uh, animals, uh, Marcel? Pardon me? Do you have a pardon problem me? with al- animals? Just the two-legged ones, and that stopped last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, see here, here in Colorado, it's illegal to grow outdoors, and the main reason is because of the two-legged ones, um, and it's because... They require us to grow in a way that nobody can happen along your grow and get access to it. So yeah, for well, that reason, we're required to grow indoors. In Canada, through the old regulations, we were permitted to grow either indoor or outdoor or both. So we have a right. life here to grow outdoor, and what I did is I built a compound um, to grow my plants in. Oh, Nice. But then last year, somebody cut the fence and stole some plants. Now, next, oh, no, in July, the the adult of the two individuals gets sentenced to jail, and the other one is going through restorative justice. So they were both caught because of, my house is surrounded by video cameras. Ah, oh, cool. smart man, very smart. Um, it's our medicine, and we grow it as such. So it's all grown outdoors, and it's all organic, and. It grows very beautiful in the location that we have. Nice. What kind of strains do you grow? Don't you have a short grow, short growing season in Canada, pretty short? No, I mean, um, here on this coast, we can usually go until the end of October. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. When, and when do you start? When you when is it? When can you put your plants out? Uh, I'll put them out in about two weeks. I'm looking at the 1st of June. Nice. So, and, so you you'll you'll do one grow from June to October, yes. or do you do multiple grows? Well, you could say multiple because there'll be a few water flowers that are going to finish in there early. So, oh yes, yeah. oh, smart, very smart. Right. So I try and try and space my harvesting over the August. I'll start harvesting um, in September and October. Nice. Right on. So, what kind of what kind of I mean, I mean what kind of uh, Yield do you get out of your garden? Last year I averaged a pound per plant of dried weight. Right on. That's and nice. that's dry weight, you said? That's dry weight, yeah. That's nice. great. That's excellent. That's really good. Is that is that a good number? Like is that a good round number for somebody who's just doing it themselves? Oh indeed. Yeah, Actually, that is yeah. Good. a lot of a lot of people who are beginning only get maybe I don't know. Say 15, 20, 20 grams a plant, maybe. Well, outdoor, I know, I know you can, my... outdoor, you can achieve a bit more if you have a half decent growing season. Um, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. My indoor, first indoor grow was only 15 grams. <laughs> yeah. I mean, indoor, it depends on how you're growing and what style you're using, too. I mean, if you're using a, a, a sea of green or a screen or something like that, you may right. be looking at 30 grams a plant. But right, yeah. I have growers that that will grow indoor, but they'll grow massive plants in five gallon buckets and pull off mm-hmm. close to a pound per plant. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you can definitely do that. It's a matter of of how much space do you have and how much money do you want to put into it. Yeah, and time too. Is the and other time. thing I you know, how much time do you really want to let that plant veg so you can get the higher yield for when you flower it out? Right. I mean, four weeks will make a ton of difference, but it's also a ton of difference in cost to run your lights for four extra weeks. That is absolutely correct. Yeah, and any equipment you're running, if you're running an AC, if you are using HIDs, if you're running an AC unit, if you're running a you know a sulfur burner or even a CO2 generator or anything like that, depending on how big the grow is, just depending uh, that, yeah, that that's, quite a bit of money you're spending well, there just for the extra four weeks. Being a poor person with a disability pension, growing indoors isn't a real viable option. But knowing how to I grow, think, 
outdoors is extremely, extremely prudent thinking. Because I hear you. we don't oh, pay yeah. for power. Right. And they get fed rainwater. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah, that is. That's great. What, what so is, I I had to come up with a trick to grow fast and big in in Canada. Mm-hmm. What I did is I, after a few years of trial and error, come up with the idea of that black landscape fabric laid down onto the ground mm-hmm. and growing growing containers sitting on that. And you do that to stress weeds, or well. One is it stresses the weeds and it keeps all the slugs and crawling insects away from your plants. But more oh, importantly, sure. during the day, the ground heats up. At night, oh, it, only, yeah. it only drops oh. a couple degrees overnight because it's super warm. So you get constant root growth even during the night. Oh, right. Smart. That's a really smart. So, um, a couple years, a, couple years I'm going to use that one of our tips to people. That's a good one. Yeah, it is a good tip. A couple of years ago, I did Durban Poison, and um, the problem was every every week I had to go out and cut them back because I had mm-hmm. eight foot fence. When I finished them, they were still 12 feet tall. Nice. So they grew tall fast. Wow. <laughs> That's great. That's really good. That is. I never got to see the outdoor plants that I was growing to finish. I was in Florida at the time and had four outdoor and uh, Popo showed up and locked me up. <laughs> it was about 10 foot tall when they found them. And you guys, wow. uh, you guys are developing a lot of your own strains as well? Yeah. Yeah, we got <laughs> quite a few. We've uh, are you across play- and we're Are you playing with auto growth. flowers? I've, no, not yet. I've grown a couple lot of flowers, but uh, unfortunately, no, no one here sells or or any of the other growers because I trade seeds with other growers all the time, uh, and nobody I know has auto flowers at this point. Unfortunately, that, that's something I would like to get a hold of more, but it's just no dispensaries, uh, medical or recreational, sell them, and no growers I've come across yet have them either. See, auto that's flowers. Her- Oh, yeah, auto flowers are becoming really popular in Canada, especially with a lot of the outdoor growers, because you can end up running two crops a year. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Versus yeah, there's there's a lot of advantages to auto flowers. I mean, there's some disadvantages too. But for people who want to have a plant that's kind of a you know plant it, feed it, and forget it, that's auto flowers. I'm they don't. Al is a perfect candidate to to. Build a closet with an auto flower. In his residence, yeah, he is. Yeah. Maybe. He can take a part of his bedroom closet, put an auto flower in it, You're and gonna probably get me get busted, a man. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. <laughs> well, we 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 grow in our basement, and I'm lucky enough that I have a 2,000 square foot basement, and it has nine foot ceilings, I, which I, is unusual. I'd like, to, I'd like to experiment in a box as opposed to a closet in a, in a grow box. Well, and we we grow in grow tents down there, and okay. we we found really good high quality grow tents that you can get for less than a hundred bucks. I've seen them online because, like, like um, was it Marcel that said you're on disability? Yep, uh, I am as well. But I yeah. I am too because I have this inherited neuromuscular disease. I have braces on my legs. I have to walk with a cane. My hands are curled up. They're really fucked up. I have to type with my thumbs. You should see us writing books and me typing with my thumbs, you know. Um, But because of that, we've had to always find the lowest cost um, alternatives for growing that we can. And part of how we developed our systems were because of my limit, you know, our limited incomes. And so... um, So you people are exactly like me. <laughs> Sounds like it. Cause yeah. you're, you're, we're we, doing the same things. Exactly. I'm teaching people at the same time. I just teach really? them here. Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. So I act, I act as a cannabis consultant, and, and I teach everybody. Nice. That's nice. awesome. 
it's the only way people are going to learn. People have to be willing to teach others. You have to be able to. Yeah, talk it about is. It. And, and for us, we want to we want to help guide some people away from all of the advice that's out there that says it costs you thousands of dollars to start a grow. We know it's not true. We we won the best marijuana plant growing on the cheap. You know. Yeah, everything that's in the books, I, we we tested and did before, and even followed step by step two or three grows what was written in the books and talk, produced talk a great. Book, talk a little bit about your books. Tell us about them. Um, they're available on it. Well, they're all available on Amazon and in bookstores. Um, they uh, also you can see all about them if you go to marijuanabooks dot com. That's that's one of our websites, and we list all our books up there. We have a book called Growing Indica, a book called Growing Sativa, a book called Growing Autoflowers, um, because the rules for autoflowers are entirely different from uh, other cannabis plants. We have um, a book called Grow Room Setup Safety and Hygiene, because we believe that if you want to have the the most trouble free grow you can that's what you have to do is is keep a really really clean grow room so you don't have you know bugs and pests and pathogens in there um, we have a book called harvesting and curing and we have a book called book of strains we're getting we're going to put out a, a new book of strains probably in the next few months um, what we do on, in book of strains is we cover the strains that are most commonly found in dispensaries. I mean, there's so many of them down here now in the States. It's crazy. Pardon? I couldn't understand that. Uh, I said lately there's so many of them down here in the States coming up, different strains. It's just crazy. Yeah, there are. So we, we try to, we try, what we do is we kind of do a survey of a few hundred dispensaries and see what strains they carry. And then we find the ones that are the most common. If, the, if it's one that's only carried by one dispensary or two, we won't cover it necessarily, but we cover the most common ones so that people can, um, you know, make some decisions about what they want in a strain. And in the information, we talk about what um, medical uses that strain has been used for in the past, you know, with success. And in the back of the book, there's an index um, of ailments, and and for each ailment, there's a list of strains that have been successfully used by people for those ailments. Cool. I love cannabis. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we love our weed. Jo Justin and I are related. I'm his mother, oh, and wow. I'm an old. Cool mom. I'm an old, <laughs> I'm an old lady. I'm 65. That that that's a, that's and not that old. old. <laughs> That's well, uh, yeah, but because because I'm a baby boomer, I you know I grew up smoking weed in the '60s. Yep. And um, and you never you know, stopped. I, well, I actually I actually did stop for a while because I went through a period where every time I smoked, it would lower my blood pressure to the point I would pass out. Wow. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, luckily, I got past that stage. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good that you can get past it. I I yeah. stopped I stopped for ten years and ended up getting sick with multiple sclerosis. Oh, good. <clears throat> so I figured that I probably had multiple sclerosis my entire life, but because I was constantly using cannabis, I was always keeping it at bay. Probably yeah, so. Sense. So, do you find now? Now, is it is 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 it in remittance or whatever they call it? Um, no, they don't know what to call it now. Um, because I used to be in a wheelchair, but now mm -hmm. I'm walking, talking, and nice. pretty much working seven days a week. He's a giant puppet. People. He's got strings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I. Um, That's very cool. But what I did is I had to do a lot of research on my own to figure right, out how, right. how to make cannabis work for me and my condition. Um, because I've shared everything that I've been doing. Others that have been following along that have been doing the same thing with me are showing the same improvements that I'm showing. So we must all well, be on the right great. track. 
Yeah. So the, the neuromuscular disease I have is similar to multiple sclerosis in so, that it's de- demyelination of the nerve sheath. Yeah. So then all um, you need to do is increase your connect- cannabis amount. And so for me, it's what's, it's the, the difference is, whereas with MS, it's in the central nervous system, and with the disease I have, it's in the distal nervous system. So it's, it literally affects me from my elbows to my fingertips and from my knees to my toes. Right. And uh, peripheral neuropathy. Exactly. It's called, it's called, um, it's the actual name of it is Charcot Marie Tooth Disease, but they also call it hereditary motor sensory neuropathy. Now, do you only smoke cannabis or do you ingest it as well? Um, I ingest it sometimes. Um, I'm really bad at remembering to, ing- you know, um, it, because of the amount of time that it takes for it to get active in your system and and be working. Right. I, I just I don't remember to do it in time, and so I end up I vape it. Well, what I do is I ingest high doses, and I smoke all the time, but. Um, usually in scheduled doses around 7 a.m., noon, 4, 7 or 8 at night. Have another ingestion. And, and what, what form do you ingest it in? I, I take pure cannabis oil. <laughs> Ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I do that too. No, I take pure cannabis oil. I, I know, yeah. I know some people who put cannabis oil in capsules and swallow it. Right. Uh, mine go in capsules, but before they go into capsules, it's pre-mixed with hemp seed oil and liquid vitamin D. Ah. Um, having MS means I'm also deficient in vitamin D, so I've combated that by adding the vitamin D to the actual cannabis and hemp seed oil. Oh, okay. That's okay. smart. Yeah. Maybe yeah. get three fatty acids in hemp seed oil actually open up the CB2 receptors, so you get more pain relief from your cannabis ingestion. So, so when you when you make the uh, what method do you use to make your cannabis oil? I I um, the, the same method everybody else uses, except I use uh, Canadian isopropyl alcohol. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey. All right. So I and the reason I went with isopropyl is because isopropyl is both a polar and a non-polar solvent, so it extracts all of the cannabinoids off the plant. So you actually get a full cannabinoid profile in your oil with the turpentine nice. flavonoids. So you, are you able to get what a ninety percent alcohol? Ninety nine point nine, ninety nine point nine percent. Oh, nice. Um, so then, the big concern was always about residual solvent left. So, sent a sample of oil to the so- to uh, the lab for analysis for residual solvent and come back with less than 0.0 parts per million. Nice. Nice. Wow, that's great. So we've... I live in the area where Rick Simpson is from. Oh, nice. So Rick and I met many years ago when I first got sick. Um, Basically, I use his process uh... In theory, but instead of in, just instead of using butane, you use the pure isopropyl I, alcohol. Yes, um, because it's medical grade isopropyl that we use up here. Um, I know that okay. they, they, they denature the isopropyl in the U.S., so you can't use it the same. Yeah. So I always have to correct people that I use Canadian isopropyl alcohol. Ours is different. Yeah, I don't think we can get alcohol like that here. The closest we could get to something that's Pure alcohol would be Everclear or something right. like that, but no, which is green no, alcohol, cool. and then again, that's a, just a polar, yeah. but not a non-polar as well. So, right, exactly. So, how would you suggest people in in the states get um, the uh, the I, good alcohol? I, I don't think you can because I don't think you can even import it in. Um, yeah, I so think normally yeah, in this, uh, for for the for patients that I deal with in the states, I usually let let them know that go ahead. Alcohol, um, and then still mix it with hemp seed oil before you start ingesting it. I would think that moonshine would work really well. That's grain alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I, I I'll make tinctures with with grain alcohol or moonshine. Yep. But 
Mm -hmm. When I make tincture or butter or anything like that, I make it from the oil that I made from the isopropyl. Ah. So I don't bother getting chlorophyll. I don't get any green taste. I don't have anybody getting sick and gagging off of it. Um, using the oil in that method, basically all you can taste are the actual cannabinoids. Nice. Wow, that's great. So it's a, it's a nice refined process, and, and I can make medicated chocolate ice cream, and nobody else can. <laughs> Yeah, I'm telling, I'm, I'm telling I want some medicated chocolate ice cream. Ooh, ice cream. <laughs> Coming for some. Coming for some. Yeah. <laughs> that good old fashioned medicated goo. Yeah, but um, I don't like the taste of cannabis, and I had to figure out ways that I could be able to ingest cannabis without getting sick. No, I'm the same way. I always. All of these people that I meet or that I read about who are cannabis connoisseurs who love the taste and the smell, and, and actually I do like the smells, but um, I have never tasted cannabis that tasted good to me. I won't say that because I've grown some nice stuff that tastes good. Um, I don't like the smell of burning cannabis, and I don't like the taste of chlorophyll. I love the smell of flowering. Yeah. I like the smell of some. Right now we have some growing that smells really sweet. Yeah, it smells like just like candy. We're growing some sweet diesel and some flow um, in one of our grow tents, and it and it, it smells like, uh, it does, it smells like candy. It's really sweet. That's not, that, that, that actually has an appeal to a lot of people. We have a strain here that... Uh, seems to be rather popular and it's heavy duty fruity heavy duty fruity heavy duty fruity. I haven't heard of that before and <coughs> it's it's a strain that basically all you can smell is is like a bowl of fruit nice wow. it's a, a very fruity flavored strain nice but unfortunately everybody here just says Oh, I only like Kush. <laughs> yeah, what are you smoking? Kush. Kush. Um, uh, Amy just... I, 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 I yeah. think that's the traditional Canadian smoke there, I have to say. Yeah, it, I think it's because they don't realize that there are things other than Kush. Oh, True. Yeah. Well, what, there, is, yeah. I mean, you could turn around and you could give them something like a, a, a good organic Colombian gold and tell them it was a Kush and they'd be really happy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I think you're right, and and here in the states too, for some reason, OG is well, every everything you get, you know, or everybody says they want OG. Yeah, yeah it's, it's funny. I grew OG last year, and I won't grow OG again. It's just a name. I mean, people. That's what people like. Yeah. Identify. Yeah, I, know, I, people, I haven't tried anything that was OG or Kush that I liked. People identify I, the, the the word Kush with a good strain. And and yep. uh, it and now it's a money maker. I mean, uh, yep. everybody from the guy down the road to the dispensary in the city uh, w pushes the Kush. They do the Bubba, the Pink, yeah. you know, the the OG. Oh yeah. And and but as far as like I live in the country, so you know, as far as the as the guy down the road is like what I say uh, goes. To sell, to to make money, uh, when somebody says, "What do you got?" They say it's a cush, and that way, yeah. you go, okay, I'll take that. Because if you say it's <laughs> it's yeah. a it's a, I don't know what it is, so, uh, maybe I'll go to the other guy down the road. You know, right. so it, it's just a well, you know, I'm, I'm so old that there was no such thing as different strains. There was just weed. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. that's the way it was when I started. It but was then, weed and hash started. and oil. That's what we got. You got three choices. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, when I started, there was no such thing as having a dispensary that you could walk into. When no. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Select. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, when I, when this, I mean, I'm, I'm so damn old that, you know, you bought a baggie about it, that had about an ounce in it, and it was five bucks. Yep, and you measured it by the finger. 
Yeah. Well, well we, but you know what? It had, it, had, it had stems and seeds and shit in it. You know what? <laughs> we used to get nickel bags, which were a quarter ounce, yeah. dime bags, oh. which were a half ounce, yep. and then full ounces for $20. I used to get, uh, and then and then when it, it went up to about sixty for an ounce for a long time in Toronto. Yeah, right? and and uh, but you could get. I mean, now considering in Toronto now, even at a dispensary, you're looking at between two forty and two eighty for a, for a good mm-hmm. premium foo foo bud, as I call it, or a yeah. Kush. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, really, the only difference there, though, is um, somebody who you're trusting their knowledge in what they're doing has verified that that's what that is. Uh, cause, right. You know, yeah. So unless you put it in the ground and you know where that seed came from and you know exactly what it is and it's been tested and blah, 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 you don't know what the fuck you're getting. Mm-hmm. It could be anything. Yeah, you're right. you're absolutely right. Yeah. We have no way of knowing what it, they, they, they can say it's this and that or Cindy 99 or whatever, yeah. and yeah. Yeah. who knows if it is. Justin actually has a, uses a method where he creates his own seeds because once he's got you know, plants that he, he likes and that he's certified, you know, the origin and all that. <coughs> he What he does is on the lower branches of, of the females, after he... We, we never use feminized seeds, ever. Um, and so when we plant, we always end up with some males, or usually do. And so as soon as he knows they're males, he'll separate them into a different area and he'll collect the pollen from the males and then on the females he will use uh, like Q-tips or a a small brush and he'll hand pollinate the the bud sites on the lowest branches that don't get that much light anyway yeah and and he'll produce seeds on those lowest branches and that way we we keep having a, a good supply of seeds yeah, and that way I'm not sacrificing the quality of the top buds too for just seeds. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that, exactly. That's how like how way over how my head, man. Of seeds do you have? <laughs> oh shoot, I, I don't know. Thirty. Over thirty. He yeah. has thirty or forty different strains of seeds now in his collection. How many? How yeah, many I'm different? Selling, how many different strains do you? How many, how many do you do typically in a grow? How many different How many strains? Plants? How many different strains? I was doing a lot more. I was a caregiver for a couple other people. Uh-huh. Uh, laws changed here very recently in Colorado, so I'm not a caregiver for those people anymore. I'm just growing for myself now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, before, I was, the most I would do at one time would be 12. I would have flowering out at one point. Because any more than that for me to, to keep control and to watch and keep track of it, it gets to be work and then at the end when I'm flushing flushing 12 plants is a lot of freaking work I mean it's not bad I mean don't get me wrong I love it it's a work of passion but it, it would take me like two and a half three hours to flush all the plants every time and so yeah. it's nice now that I, I cut now I grow uh, six uh, out at a time or flower out at a time I think we're we're going to harvest on June sixth. We're going to harvest five plants that are pretty big, and then he's got another grow that has some more plants in it that we're going to harvest a month or two later. What are the names of the strains you're entering in the contest, the marijuana growing contest at the Denver County Fair this year? Yeah, four strains. They changed the the categories because I had one that was specifically for best hybrid, but unfortunately (laughs) that category doesn't exist anymore. Um, I've got Lambo, uh, Wonder Woman, Sweet Diesel, and a strain I'm calling the Three Amigos. It was a clone a friend of mine gave me that was a good stable clone, which (laughs) I know we said before we don't take them. This is one of the very extreme rarities. Uh, it's uh, triple Kush crossed with Kunduz crossed with uh, Stardog. So that's the one I'm calling Three Amigos because it didn't have a name to it, so I'm just naming it. But those are the four I'm entering in for the uh, Denver County Fair. 
can you uh, give us a little idea where people can find you and, and your websites and yada, 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 yada? Well, our website is drgrow.com, and you can email us at doctor at, it's D-O-C-T-O-R at, at drgrow.com. Um, we own b- both versions of drgrow.com, so n- no matter which one they type in, it, the D-O-C-T-O-R-G-R-O-W.com forwards to drgrow.com. So they can do that. And our, our email uh, address, he, Justin is justin at drgrow.com, and it's D-R-G-R-O-W. And um, I'm Toria, T-O-R-I-A, at drgrow.com. And then you can also email doctor at drgrow.com um, to reach us. Our websites are drgrow.com. We also have a website that's askdrgrow.com where we answer growers' questions. So if anybody has any questions, you send them in, we'll answer them. Um, and then we also have marijuanabooks.com and marijuanagrowschool.com. That's a lot of dot coms. I thought I had a lot of <laughs> websites. I'm, I'm, in a, I'm, in a, I'm, in, I'm actually a, a domain dealer also. Ah, so, okay. I I have I should talk to you guys offline. I have I own um, cannabisradionetwork.com dot com uh-huh. and cannabistelevisionnetwork dot com and a few others like that that I've acquired for possible future ventures. Oh, cool! I should have talked to you when I sold marijuana network marketing dot com. There you go. <laughs> it's called marijuana what? I used to own marijuana network marketing dot com. I just got rid of it. Uh, I just own lifestyleradio.net and lifestyleradio.ca, and uh, we're at the end of our show. I've enjoyed chatting with uh, the folks at Dr. Grow, Victoria and Justin, um, and uh, I'm just I'm overwhelmed with with just absorbing everything that every everyone was talking about. It's like information overload was well, I mean I literally I get a pot I put a seed in the pot and if it grows great and if it doesn't I try again <laughs> <laughs> yeah. indeed, indeed. I've had some good luck I've had some bad luck but and practice makes perfect that's right that's right yeah I mean, absolutely well thank you for having us on we really uh, appreciate it we've really enjoyed talking to you guys well I've enjoyed oh, it too definitely yeah. it's been a fun time I've enjoyed this you can catch us here every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time here on Lifestyle Radio. Uh, we put the podcast out shortly after the show, so if you want to listen to it again later, it'll probably be playing somewhere. Um, <laughs> if you're interested in being a guest on the show, give Brian or myself a shout. And uh, yeah, don't ask me. Don't ask Marcel because he's so damn busy with patients every day. He doesn't have time for us other than the two hours he allots out of his life every Friday here on Lifestyle Radio. <laughs> and sometimes I'll bring patients with me. I don't care. Yeah. And, 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 and speaking of that, if you are a patient, we're going to start doing some uh, a patient testimonials, success stories, whatever. Uh, send us a note. And... Uh, Give us a call and record a message on our answering machine or something, you know, because we want to yeah. start uh, making sure. We want you on the show, and we promise we won't make fun of you too much. We only make fun of Ellen. Well, only... we make fun of Brian. Ooh, not hey, so now. much. Not so much. He's not so much fun. He's got that silly accent. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Victoria (laughs) and Justin, thank you for joining us tonight. It's been a pleasure chatting with you, eh? (laughs) And uh, because it's it's a boot that time. (laughs) A boot. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you guys. We really appreciate it. We've really enjoyed it, and we learned a bunch too. You know, from so it was it was a great conversation. Well, well, thank you. We'll, we'll we'll definitely chat with you again sometime soon. As I said, we're that here. That sounds great. We're here 7 p.m. Eastern Time, LifestyleRadio.net. We're out of here, 
and I think I got some Chief Greenbud to play out, and it's 420 somewhere. We'll see. <laughs> clock to smoke your pot you should know you're not alone if your grass is like molasses hydrogrown that gets you stoned if you're counting the hours and watching the minutes for that special time when everyone hits it take it from me you're really not that far away Something fat and long Pack me a bowl Or fill me a bomb It only comes twice a day But I don't care It's 420 somewhere This smoke break Is gonna make my afternoon When I get high it's my last but I'll smoke it up It'll be alright I've been sitting here waiting For what seems like a year My Jamaican connection said he'd leave me here If the phone's for me Tell him he better be on his way and Roll me something fat and long Pack me a bowl Fill me a bomb It only comes twice a day but I don't care It's 420 somewhere I spent all my cash Replenished my stash But it's only a quarter or two at a moment like this, I can't help but wonder What would Willie do? He'd say to fire that thing up Roll me something fat and long Pack me a bowl, fill me a bomb It only comes twice a day, but I don't care Roll me something fat and long Pack me a bowl Fill me a bomb It only comes twice a day But I don't care I don't care It's 420 somewhere I like more than smoking trees They'll make you dance the dope z do And teach you how to achieve the growth Smoke a bowl on the 420 Radio Show On Lifestyle Radio So how you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Why not? Trying to get on this Lifestyle Radio website Sounds like a cool website Yeah, it's alright you might, have it. you might have it. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. Good evening. I'm Coulter Wonkite. I'm already into the 420. Damn it. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point. Good. Enough.